And how did the idea came from uh, combining the, your uh, product development, your medical device development uh, uh, fields? How did the idea of uh, Coravin come about? Yeah, I I, uh, I was lucky I, in part. Um, I was a trained inventor, and so what that means is, um, you know, I'd been working at Pfizer for years, developing programs where we believed that we could schedule invention. Uh, and so we would give ourselves three months. We would understand all the unmet needs in a particular market in medicine, let's say cardiovascular surgery. And then we would invent, um, after observing uh, surgery for a month, about a month, we'd, we'd invent uh, new solutions to problems that we had uncovered. And so I, I was very familiar with the process of invention. Um, and core to that process is having a tremendously good understanding of the unmet need. What is the problem? It's my belief, my firm belief, that the best innovations come from a unique perspective on the problem itself. Uh, and once you've characterized the need in a unique way, um, that allows you or enables you to invent something that's never existed before that's hopefully uh, better than, than that which is already there. And so that, that process was well understood by me. That secondarily, I'd, I'd invented a couple of different medical devices that use needles. So um, my first one with J&J &J was a needle that was involved with a catheter that they put into your hand when you walk into the, uh, into, uh, into the hospital and they need access to your vascular system. The other one was for chemotherapy delivery for patients with cancer. It was an implant underneath the skin that we would access with a needle over and over again during the course of somebody's therapy. So I was, I was really good at needles by the time I was about 24. Um, and then the unmet need. Right, I I, uh, I loved wine. I loved drinking wine. I loved the variety of wine, but it had its limitations. Right, my spouse didn't like the same wine that I did. Uh, she tended to like uh, high-end, very good Nebbiolo. I like it too. I love Barolo. I love Barbadesco. Um but it's not all I want to drink. Uh, sorry to my good friends in in Piemonte. Uh, I, I wanted to drink some white wines. Uh, so one of us either my wife or I was compromising whenever we opened a bottle because generally speaking, you drink a glass or two, right? Uh, and maybe you'll finish a bottle on a Friday or a weekend, but we were always pulling corks on wine where one of us was sacrificing. I also realized that I wanted more than one different kind of wine in an evening. Like, Why am I restricted by this volume of sale, the 750 milliliters that I, I purchased, this container that was developed back in the 1600s. Wh why do I have to drink that volume? As soon as you pull the cork, air gets in, you pour wine, more air gets in, it starts to degrade. And so you're stuck, you're on this timeline as soon as the cork comes out, you are gonna finish that bottle before you go to the next one. Or if you open two, both are at risk. And the reality is, I wanted to be able to drink from five different wines on a Tuesday uh, and, and drink the amount that I wanted out of the bottle, not the volume of sale. And, and I, you buy it by the bottle, you drink it by the glass. I, was, I remember getting frustrated and then my, my wife got pregnant and stopped drinking completely. And so I was like, okay, now I've got a crisis. And I remember sitting at my kitchen table, writing down the unmet need and you know, a better way to preserve an open bottle of wine. I was like, well, there's vacuum, there's all these other things, spray cans. They kind of keep the wine for a few days, but that's not really what I want. I want something where I can taste it today. If it's not ready, come back to it in a year. If it's not ready, come back to it another three years. Wait until the wine is perfect. Offer my friends whatever they wanted by the glass. Offer my spouse whatever she wanted by the glass. If they wanted another wine, I was going to pour them another one. And that wasn't possible with Vacuvan at home, right? You were still on a clock. And so I remember writing, you know, I need a way to teleport wine out of the bottle into my glass. <laughs> uh, and then I wrote a way of drinking any wine anytime without having to think about when I'm going to drink from that bottle again, a way to pour wine from a bottle without opening it. And so uh, that was the moment, my eureka moment, where I was like, huh, I wonder how that's possible. And so in medicine, we use needles to draw pharmaceuticals out of bottles all the time. And so I had a needle from my chemotherapy device and a bottle in my hand going, I've got to be able to get wine out of here with this. And so that was 1998. That son is now a cybersecurity programmer and he's 
He's uh, about six foot four, and he's 25 years old. So, uh, you know, it took me a while. Uh, I came up with the first good prototype in, in 1919 and, uh, and then started testing it at home. So I, I run clinical trials all the time in medicine. And so I said, how am I going to prove to myself that I can drink a glass from a bottle today and come back to it in five years? Well, I'll, I'll run a randomized prospective clinical trial, I'll, I'll blinded. And so I started accessing bottles of wine and different types of wine and different vintages with these needles, pouring wines out of the bottle and writing down the, the date, the needle, the gas that I used. I used multiple gases to try to push the wine out without air touching the wine. And, uh, and over the course of eight years of testing and development, I refined the prototype. And so once I knew that I could drink a glass from a bottle today and come back to that bottle in five years, and it's the same as an unopened bottle um, that I blind tasted against, that's when sort of the floodgates opened. I was like, okay, I can drink anything I want whenever I want. And uh, you know, it, was a, it was really a, a labor of love that I did on weekends and nights. That's an amazing story. And thanks for watching this video. You can watch the full podcast episode by clicking here or watch another interesting video by clicking here. Let's continue the discussion in the comment section and see you in the next one.